A good flow rate. A good flow rate right there, Dark. All right, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm smoking Ed Curry. I'm the president, owner, mad scientist, and chef at the Pucker Butt Pepper Company, and we're going crazy. Welcome to another edition of the Reaper Growing Camp. Uh, we got some special guests with us today. Bubba's coming in. Oh no, <laughs> we better shut down production. No, Bubba's here. We got Gator from YouTube. Brett Rogers is in the house. We got Tom, we got Bill, and we're gonna show you how to transplant some plants. Now, I don't know if you saw, but these are the ones we did in the, in the windowsill. Uh, up at the store and I want to show you something look this plant and this plant were both planted at the same exact time okay give your seeds a chance to grow they're gonna pop eventually we noticed we had a few aphids on here we're gonna do a, a, a whole thing on pest control uh, but not in this video in this video we're gonna transplant and I got two of the best transplanters in town here. Brett, you want to give me a hand, Tom? Hey, these are the most well-known hands in all of the Pepperdine. His hands have been on screen more than any other hand there are. So what we do, okay? Brett, if you'll do the honors. We got miracle Grow Performance Organics Potting Soil. Just so you see what's down here, we have a seven gallon bucket. Think about three quarter right there? Yeah, that's about good. You don't need anything fancy. All you gotta do is take the bucket, make a little hole. Real simple. Squeeze it, take it out, go in. That's how simple it is. You don't need to get fancy transplanting. You don't have to put anything special around the roots. You don't even have to break it up. Those roots will grow. All you have to do is put it in dirt. We use seven gallon buckets. We found that those give the best performance for plants, but anything really 4.7 or above will work. So we're gonna plant a few of these reapers. I think it is. That's miracle grow organic. <laughs> performance. Organic. Performance organic. I want to make sure you get out of the way. I've been in the hospital a couple times to cut myself. And that might be sharp enough to do nothing. Yeah, that's a good thing though, because for well, <laughs> I'm not <laughs> allowed to, operating. I'm not allowed to use a knife. I'm too shaky. See, one time people don't understand that Ed was doing all this by himself. <laughs> doing a lot of it. <laughs> we so. were just talking about Ed's first greenhouses today. Yeah, we were. Yeah, people are trying to take them. You got a twofer there. Got a twofer. It's okay to have a twofer. Yeah, it's okay to have a twofer. It's okay to have a threefer. Well, Brett's doing that. I want to show you something. This is a leftover one from last year. We know what it is, but you don't know what it is. Uh, it was sitting out in the sun, so it's kind of looking a little uh, sad. Sad is the case. Uh, this branch right here is totally dead, so we're going to chop that off. We'll probably chop off a few of these, too. All it needs is a little bit of water and it'll come back to life. And we'll show you what it looks like after the next video. Tom, will you give it some water, please? That's good. You know, some of you growers know about when it gets hard up top and the water just runs out like it's doing now, what you might have to do is put a couple holes, like right here. That helps get the water get down by the roots and not just run that's pretty much running all down the sides right now. So you put little holes with your finger or use a little, you can use a stake or a piece of wood. That'll help the water absorb into the soil, into the roots. That's still going to do the same thing, but you got a better shot at filling these little holes up that I put, yeah. poked in here. Yeah. Get like that there. That's it, buddy. Now, Ed, what would you say on transplanting something like that? Probably not yet, no, right? No, not yet. Something yeah. like this, maybe? I mean, you could. But honestly, you want to put a healthy plant, right? Yeah. See, the, show them those littler guys real quick. This guy? No, the other one you, you had. Yeah, they're not quite... They're not quite ready. Yeah, they're... You it, could transplant that, but you'd have to keep it in the shade, you'd have to baby it, and chances are it's going to die, okay? 
So wait until a plant's like this tall. Basically plant this, wait on this. This definitely has a little more time to go right there. Yeah. <laughs> you put this out in the sun, it'll evaporate in about 10 seconds. Yeah. Boom. Especially in the and South Carolina And then they'll call heat. us and say, something happened <laughs> my to my plants. plants. <laughs> my <laughs> plants, they didn't make it. Oh, yeah, really? <laughs> and we're not making fun of people. We're just giving you huh. uh, the common things that we hear. No. You know, I put out my, my plants. They're, they were an inch and a half tall. They shriveled up in the sun. That's what's going to happen. We learn from past mistakes. Yes. We, we've made enough mistakes for everybody, believe me. Now, when you are transplanting, speaking of sun, these plants have been growing indoors in a windowsill. Can they go out directly into the sunlight after transplanting? Absolutely not. You need to acclimate them to the sun. What I do for the ones that I do at home, okay, we, we're lucky enough to have greenhouses. So these, these plants get acclimated. But the ones I do at home in the windowsill, in the morning, they go out for an hour when the sun comes up. I bring them back in, take the kids to school. In the evening, I put them back out for an hour. I do that for three, five days. Then two hours. Then three hours. Usually by the time they've been out there for three hours, they're well acclimated, and you can leave them in the sun all day long. You call that hardening off. Hardening the plant. Hardening off the plant. You hear it growing, hardening off the plant. And plus these greenhouses had shade cloth. Shade cloth. So we're only getting about 80%. Not even. This this 70%. is sixty percent. Sixty percent. Sixty percent. Yeah. Yeah. So they have a little insulation, or not insulation, but protector. I guess protecting that. So, but if you want to do, like you said, aphid problems, use ladybugs. We yeah. try to be all natural with that because neem oil. Obviously, when a plant's this small, you start coating it with neem oil, and it gets to here and to here, the aphids will not find this attractive at all. Uh, we but, learned that from Bubba. <laughs> yep, we learned that from Bubba. Because we use uh, ladybugs, green lace wings, parasitic wasps. Uh, you know, I order a lot of bugs, a lot of bugs. But neem oil will do the job at home, especially if you got something on the porch. Right, right. Okay, you don't want to release a bunch of ladybugs in your house. Here's something too, it's pretty cool. You can see right here, where this really is pretty much dead, right here. That's dead wood, like that. You want to come right here, right, mm -hmm. and hit it, cut it at an angle. You cut it flat, it doesn't really matter, it's going to come back. If you see something like this on your plants, dead wood. Come down here where the green is, bam, you're there. And it'll Same thing here, right back. bam. Right. Yeah. So we're going to keep on potting up over here, guys. We just wanted to show you a little bit of transplanting because a lot of you are at the point of transplanting. Uh, should we show them the other tray from the window? Absolutely. All right, you want to grab that? I got it. Here's the other guy here. here. These are smaller cells. See, usually you transplant from here, you can go to this, but normally you can pop these right out and go right into the little plugs here. You can, but they're still kind of weak. I, I would wait. I mean, they're, especially when they're, you know, the root system hadn't fully developed yet. See, there's a little bit of root there. So, I mean, you can do, go to bigger trays, or but you can also go straight to there with these guys. Yes, you can. So last week, we planted these. As you can see, each each kind of plant is different. We've got everything popped right here. Someone put a lot of seeds in there. It's probably me. <laughs> and then these other ones are just starting to pop. So it takes time, guys. This is one week. Let's see what it looks like in two weeks. Dang, Let's bro, see. Save some seeds for us, though. <laughs> I know. I might, <laughs> I might have put a few in there. <laughs> I think that's got seven. Yeah. <laughs> but like we'll transplant two out of that. And maybe we'll put the other ones into little uh, little pots and sell them at the store. It all depends on what they are. But look, look at these little teeny guys getting ready to pop up. See them? See them just coming through the dirt? All right, just leave them alone. Leave them alone. They will grow. I'm just going to cut these, get this dead wood off. I always cut at an angle. Uh, my mom told me that that keeps the bugs out. I don't know if it's true or not, but that's what she told me, so that's what I'm doing. If you ever have a question of what aphids are, that's what an aphid looks like right there. They can be white, they can be green, they can even be a little tan as well. I think that's probably different development in the stage of their, yeah. their growth, but it's not hard to see it. And when you spray neem oil, make sure and get the back side or the underside of the plants as well. You can tell. These little guys have come to come to roost. If you don't address that properly, these plants won't be long, will they? No. So, 
you'll struggle all season. So we had the same problem other growers have. We just have to address them. So listen, guys. I hope you enjoyed this segment. I hope you enjoyed seeing the, some of the farm. I love you. God bless you. I hope you have a great day and a great weekend. Be kind to one another. Support one another. Don't talk down to people. If you see negative stuff, turn it into a positive. Say something to change the world. All right? We can do it one person at a time. Let's yeah. sign off. All right. Dark, it took like two hours for you to set this up. Are we ready to go yet? We're ready. Jeez, my moobs are sweating. <laughs> what the heck? All right, so what did you think about Dark's filming skills today? Oh, he's he's very, got all this rig very going. Yeah, it, it's, it's all very, very professional. He's, he's got all getting, sorts of stuff you going on. Did get toy in there yet? Yeah. Oh, wow. He is using up my, my juice on my phone with directional cameras. But I like his shirt. Today. I, didn't see it. I, it was I hate you. You're, that was the stupidest thing I ever saw. All this stuff is useless. Oh, and your shoes are nice. I love that video. That's the funniest thing in the world. I thought he did a good job. I just don't, I don't understand that camera over there because we really weren't paying attention to it. But, you know. Well, when he's moving around, you, your general focus is going to be to what's moving in your front of your face. When he's swinging the camera around and he, he's right up in front of you, like you're generally going to be looking at him. Hey, Bubba, you got anything to say to Dark?